So obviously my InDesign file is not complete. I've just been messing around with the way that it looks. But for the sake of things, let's say I'm very happy with my industrial technology portfolio. It's going to get an amazing band six because there's so much great content in here and it's 80 pages and everything's good to go. Now, normally you might go file, save, okay? Um, and obviously I've been using excellent file management because the entire time that I've been using this for the tutorials, I haven't saved it at all. So anyway, let's pretend that I was saving throughout and backing it up throughout the term. If I do that and I take this file, this, ooh, let's find it, it's on my desktop, which is obviously very clean, um, not at all. But if I go through my InDesign and I go take this InDesign file into Officeworks or any printer and go to print it, they won't be able to open it and it's just going to be a mess. One thing that is interesting to see is we've got quite a large document already, but it's got a very small file size, 1.7 megabytes. Um, if you compare that to, you know, some of the images I've got are actually nearly that size. I've gotten a two megabyte picture right here and that's bigger than the entire InDesign file despite the fact that it features in the InDesign file multiple times. So that's to do with the links. So if I just took in this file on a USB, there would be no images and it wouldn't print out. So what we need to do is we need to export that file. So export is right there, Command D, you click on it and you can choose the different file formats. So we've got interactive PDFs, we've got EPUBs, which are ebook readers, we've got flash files, HTML, which you can put onto the internet, we've got JPEGs, if you wanted to just output some pictures. Realistically, Adobe PDF print is what we want to do unless we're making some kind of fancy book. If you've got a, if you've got a Swift, you can do some really cool things and we'll show that in a second, but we just go to Adobe PDF print for now. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to step back into your folder and create a new folder called exports. Um, we'll call this uh, final portfolio and we'll hit save. You'll get this coming up. So you, the first thing you'll do is you'll see a summary um, and we'll see that there's some color issues. Uh, so it may not print out the exact color that we want based on what's on screen. That's probably okay. Um, Let's have a look. The preset specifies source profiles. Okay, so that doesn't really matter. But if you had something like uh, images were missing, then you're gonna have to relink them. So I'll teach you how to do those in a second. So we can change our compression uh, to make our files smaller. Uh, we usually want to have our image quality maximum, but if we want a small file to put on the internet or something, we could change that. You got your marks and bleeds, so you can choose to put your printer marks on and what that's going to do then is it's going to give you some little um, cut lines around here, which you could cut out so you could print edge to edge if you had lots of color. Because what's gonna happen with this design right now is there's going to be a white outline along here. There's not really anything we can do about that. So what you might wanna try and do is to create a uh, border which kind of fades to white on the edge. It'll just make it look more professional. So instead of it being a solid color, you do some kind of gradient in Photoshop and you bring it across or something like that, okay? Um, with this, uh, it's just to do with the fonts and if it saves it in there, so that's okay. You can also put a password on there. I don't recommend that if you're taking it to the printer store. You can make it compatible with any kind of Acrobat to open the PDF, which is always good if you're taking it somewhere where you don't know what version file they have. Um, and we can just export that. So once we've exported it into the file that we want, it will have our final portfolio, that's a PDF, and everything kind of looks pretty good. Um, so, you know, you can check it before you print it, but you'll see that You've got your page numbers, everything's working okay. Looks good, okay. Um, it's always good to check ahead of time that that's going to happen. We've got that and it's all good if you wanted to make a flash player with Swift. So it's viewable on the internet by somebody that has that. We can then do some interesting things like interactive page curl if you really wanted to. Um, it's gonna say that we're using CMYK printing, which is to do with uh, ink 
and Flash uses RGB, which is screen. So there's gonna be some differences in our color, but that comes up and we've got our file. We can grab the corner of it. We can flip it across. You know, sometimes for some reason, people seem impressed by that. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You can create some fun eBooks with this sort of thing. Um, you could also, of course, add in a few things. So you can add interactive elements like um, animations and videos and all kinds of stuff into InDesign and output it as a, you know, like an iPad book, if that's something that you wanted to do. That might be something that you do for your major project as well. Um, so, you know, creating some kind of animated children's book in InDesign would work out really well for I iPad and then you could just output that. Um, all in all, there's lots of options here, but realistically, for what we need to do, you get to the end, you hit export, and it works. Right now, I've got no errors. If I was to move this file, so I go, like I've said, to never do, and go into the image file, and let's, do, let's move this one to trash, um, then you should see it's checking, and I've got two errors. If I double click on them, it'll tell me that I've got links missing uh, on pages three and nine. Nice that it shows me. Um, the link file is missing and I need to relink it. So if I then go to export that file, um, let's do it as a PDF. You'll notice that it gave me a Swift and an HTML file. You could load this HTML file up to a web server and it would work as a functioning website. Of course, someone would need Flash to make it work, so it's not going to work on any Apple smartphones or iPads. So we've got that working. We're going to replace our final portfolio file. Um, I've got it saved as an interactive PDF, which I don't want to do, so I'll export it again, change it as a print. My apologies. Okay, so we do this, we export, and it'll tell me that they are inaccessible, or they're missing. You can click OK to bypass that. And what's going to happen when you go and look for it is, well, we'll see. So I've got my HTML file. I don't want the HTML file. I want to go into the PDF. And sometimes it shows up and you get lucky. Other times it doesn't. So realistically, we want to avoid that when... Uh, we show any errors by doing proper file management because maybe it'll work, but maybe it won't. And the last thing you need is to have a week until your project's due, you're printing out your portfolio, you spend all that money to get the 80 pages printed out, and then half the pictures don't show up. Proper file management is very important, so let's make sure we do it properly. Okay, I think that's the end of my very, very basic InDesign tutorial because it covers the most basic stuff. We haven't really talked about any elements of design and graphic design, but at the end of the day, We'll go over that in class and you should be able to apply those ideas to your own work. So thanks for listening.